In this lesson, we are going to talk about conducting a sound check. What is a sound check? It is the time to get solid gain structure and apply EQ and compression to each channel. So this is the time for uh, each musician or vocalist to uh, sing into their microphone or play their instrument and you are able to use that time to um, specifically uh, construct their sound using EQ and compression, of course, getting good gain structure so that when they're ready to put it into their in-ears, it's at the proper level and it won't change after you've set the gain structure. Soundcheck is not the time to set up the soundboard scene. You should have done this ahead of time. And it's frustrating to come into a rehearsal and for the soundboard to not be set and for things to not work. And that's just one more way that you can serve the team and the musicians is to be prepared by having your soundboard set up before they arrive so that when they come in, you're not using the whole team's time for something that you could have done on your own time. Let's talk about a sound check heart check. A sound check is so much more than just having audio come into your soundboard, being processed and sent out. Uh, the sound check is a time for you to set up the tone of the whole day. So let's talk about a few specific things. Be prepared to receive the band, both physically and mentally. Have your soundboard set up, the routing done, know what's gonna happen during the day, uh, who each person is on the team and what's gonna happen. Um, that's how you can be prepared more physically and then mentally be spiritually and uh, emotionally ready for the band to come and uh, for you to have a clear and sharp mind to conduct the sound check, uh, just to be as prepared as possible. Uh, this is kind of the big moment. You've, you've done the work of knowing how the soundboard works, of routing all of your channels properly, but this is the time when everything kind of comes together before the service starts. So uh, be as prepared as possible. I can't stress that enough. Also, think from the musician's perspective. They've spent a lot of time preparing for this moment when they're ready to step on that stage and begin the rehearsal. And uh, maybe you have someone on the team that has never been on the team before. They've never been on a stage before. They haven't sung into a microphone before an audience of people. And they might be nervous. You know, it's 7 a.m. You're asking them to, to sing in an empty room and then hearing their voice come through a sound system, it can be scary. So just be as, as loving and kind and patient as possible when you're working with people uh, because they'll need that to be ready to lead people in worship. Remember, you are on the same team. It's not just I'm on this side of the soundboard and I'm on the production team and you're way over there on the stage and uh, though you're, you're distanced away from each other, you're on the same team, you're trying to accomplish the same goal. So keep that in mind in each and everything that you do during the sound check. Also remember that you are leading this moment. In most other moments, the teaching pastor is leading or the worship leader uh, or on the production team, a video director. But in this moment, everyone is looking to you to know what to do next. So steward that time well and make sure that you are leading well in this moment. You're also setting the tone for the day, not just the, uh, the audio tone of the EQ and compression and effects, uh, that kind of tone, but also the emotional tone of the day. If you come in and you're grumpy and you're not feeling good and you shout at people and you're not kind, that's gonna set a bad tone for the rest of the day. But if you come in and you're gentle and loving and respectful and uh, you're just uh, setting a great emotional tone for the day, that's gonna have effect on each musician. So think of it this way. If you come in and you say, hey Bob, who's leading today, uh, it's so great to see you. I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do through you today. How's your kids? You know, that kind of thing. If you set the day up that way and then after a sound check, hey, that sounded really great. Uh, I loved what you're doing. Looking forward to the service. If you say those kinds of things, that's going to have an effect on whoever's leading and that's going to affect the way that they lead the entire congregation in worship. So don't think of this as the moment where you're just getting a gain structure and starting to mix, but think of this as the way 
of setting the tone for the entire day and how the services are going to go. Hey, it's Jake. We'll get back to Adam's lesson in one moment. But first, I want to let you know that there are more lessons just like this video within Worship Ministry School. And this lesson in particular comes from the course Mixing for Worship. Mixing for Worship is a fast track guide to sound reinforcement and advanced mixing strategies for a worship ministry context. The first module, it's all about introductory mindset and ear training concepts. The second module is about getting it right at the source, how to place microphones for drums, guitars, keys, vocal microphones, a preacher, pastor microphone. We also talk about speaker alignment for your room and system tuning so that when you get behind the mixing console and you start bringing in your inputs, uh, it's going to sound great. You're starting from a good, solid baseline of a tuned system. And then we also talk about system and stage management, staying organized as a worship sound tech, making sure you have stage plots, patch sheets, production checklists, cable management, and then in like the lesson you saw today, conducting a sound check. And then in the next module, we get to the fun stuff. We cover our mixing blueprint to help yourself, whether you're a worship pastor, worship tech team leader, or a volunteer, really learn how to dial in a professional mix for your band. And this course is gonna cover all of the most popular mixing consoles out there, the X32, Behringer Wing, Alan Heath SQ5, the PreSonus Studio Live Series consoles. So I'll put the link to Mixing for Worship down below in the description of this video. It's going to bring you to this page where you can click the buy now button. Go ahead and click to enroll to get instant access for yourself and your team. All right, enough of me. Back to Adam. This might seem pretty obvious, but I've seen it many times where people don't use names. <laughs> They'll be starting the sound check and say, hey, guitarist, can I have your tone? Hey, singer, can you start singing? People have names. They're important be respectful and use names. Uh, it seems silly that this would be a tip or a reminder, but because I've seen it in the past, I thought it had to be included. Cool. Does that feel good for you? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, can we get Neil's percussion? And then uh, could I have Hannah's guitar? Use a talkback microphone. If you're any sort of distance away from the stage, uh, you're going to have to end up raising your voice. And that can send the wrong message, even if it's unintended. So if you're having to have conversations with people or ask people things, especially over loud music, and you're not using a talkback microphone that is routed to their in-ears, you're going to be yelling. You're going to send the wrong message just because of the form of communication. So um, not just is it practical for you to, to save your voice and make sure that they can hear you when you need to be heard, but it's going to make sure that you can communicate in a more loving and effective way. So speaking of communicating properly, I always like to start my sound check with the talkback microphone and the lead vocal microphones because this is how we're going to communicate with each other. So what I like to do is uh, lean into the talkback microphone and ask everyone to raise their hands if they can hear me, just to make sure that everyone can hear me and we can communicate with each other. Cool. Cause, can everyone hear me? Can you raise your hand if you can hear me? So Neil can't hear me? Oh, Neil can hear me. Gary can hear me? No. Hey, check one, two. Okay, sweet. Uh, if all the other musicians are raising their hands and someone has their in-ears out or they don't have the talk back loud enough in their in-ears, they'll look around and wonder why everyone has their hands up and then that will get the signal across that uh, they need to get uh, me or whoever is doing the sound check in their in-ears so that they can hear me and that they're not left out. Um, so that's a great way to kind of get the sound check started and to make sure that everyone can hear you. And then also I like to start with the lead or the um, MD microphone just to make sure that whoever is leading the people on stage can communicate with me so that if um, something is going on and they need to say something to me, I'm able to hear them. Uh, it's very important to be able to communicate between the stage and front of house. Uh, that is how you accomplish the sound check. So always begin with that. As you're going through each channel, ask the musicians to play their loudest signal or their loudest tone so that you can make sure that you get a proper gain level set. 
Uh, often vocalists will be pretty timid, and sometimes you may need to ask a uh, timid vocalist to sing with a stronger vocalist that you know will help them sing louder, or you could ask a piano or acoustic guitar player to play the chorus of a song with a vocalist um, because that's something that they know. They'll know the words to it and it's something that they have prepared and it's something that they can sing out loud confidently, especially if there is a musician accompanying them. So uh, as you're asking musicians to play their loudest, keep these kinds of things in mind that uh, if you're asking a singer to sing into an empty room with no accompaniment, they may not sing their loudest. Um, also, it's, it's likely a early morning rehearsal or sound check and they may not just be um, ready to sing that loud yet. So um, another thing you can do is just have the gain dialed back a little bit from what you want it to be because they may sing louder when the whole band is going. Ask the musicians, how does that feel? Let them know that it's important for them to hear themselves properly and for them to like the sound of their instrument or their voice coming into their in-ears. If they don't, they may not sing or play at their best. They may feel a little bit inadequate or something like that just because they're not hearing themselves properly. So make sure that the musicians can hear themselves properly and that they like the sound of their instrument into their in-ears and let them know as well that it's important what they think about the sound of their instrument. Captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in Does that sound good for you? Yeah, yep. Cool. Okay. Sometimes as you're mixing, you can get into a routine or a habit of just making it happen where you're standing at the soundboard, but uh, not everyone in the congregation is hanging out with you at the sound booth. It's important that it sounds good everywhere in the room. So. Uh, during the sound check, make sure that you're walking around, listening in different parts of the room, and ensuring that it sounds good or as good as possible everywhere in the room. And finally, when you're done conducting your sound check, you have all of the signals that you need. You've got a mix started. Make sure there's a clear handoff to the music director or the worship leader so that you know it's time for them to be in charge of directing the musicians and conducting the rest of the rehearsal. You've done your part of making sure that everything is coming in properly and that they can hear themselves. And at this point, it's time to run through songs and start the mix and have the band play together. And at this point, you're no longer the leader, so you wanna make sure there's a clear handoff of giving it to the person who is gonna be in charge of directing the band. Conducting a sound check is the pinnacle of what you've prepared for and it sets the tone for the entire day. Don't let this moment pass by without giving it your best. This is a moment to really dive in and dig in and give your best and make sure that you can set a great tone for the service. This is gonna change the way that the worship leaders lead, that the congregation is led, that the way the service goes. So make sure that you do this well and that you give it your all. I'm excited to hear about the stories of how you conduct sound checks well and the difference it makes in your services. And that concludes this lesson on conducting a sound check.